But I believe it goes along with what the Lord has been saying to this church the past few weeks. Uh, this, this coincides greatly with what Pastor preached on faith. I believe it was last Sunday night. Because we're at a time where the church in America is saying we have great faith, but we're seeing great things not happening in a sense. We're, we're seeing good things happening, but how many wants the supernatural to be natural? I know I say that all the time. And we talked a, a, a few weeks ago about Jesus telling His disciples, He said, listen, I need you to go to Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. And then He would also say in Mark 16, He says, these signs will follow them that believe. And we're in... We're in a, a nation and we preach that message in a nation that's looking for a sign. They're looking for something real. They're looking for something authentic. It's, it's, it's nothing new. We've talked about it for years and years. But it comes to a place where a Haggai, Haggai the prophet said, Listen, the, the, the glory in this house will be greater than that of the former. And I, 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 I say that to, to draw this, this quick parallel to us today, I have heard of the latter house. I have heard of all the great things that God has done. And I have heard of the great miracles and the great outpourings of God's Spirit in times past. You can read of what God did in the turn of the century from the 19th century into the 20th century, what He did in Topeka, Kansas and Azusa Street and the Welsh Revival and what He did in Brownsville and all these places. We could go on and on and talk about how God used to move and we can go on and on and talk about the latter house, but I, I or the former house, but I want to see God to begin to move in the latter house. We, we talk about the latter house as something to come. No, I believe it's now. It's something that needs to come now. So the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, very familiar portion of Scripture here, verse 20. Read a couple verses for you tonight. It says, now unto him that is able to do. Do you still believe he's able? You with me this evening? Do you believe he's able? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto Him be glory and the church by Christ Jesus throughout all the ages, world without end. Amen. Verse 20 again. Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. We believe He's able tonight. I believe that... that if we did a consensus and it took a survey in this house tonight, I believe all of you would say, I believe God's able to do the miraculous. I believe God's able to just blow my mind. I believe God is able to do what His Word says that He can do. I think 100% He's able. But catch the second part of that verse. He says, according to the power of that worketh in us. According or in relation or in parallel with the power that worketh in us, in you. You see, so what God is saying is, He's saying, listen, in the first half of this verse, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. That's awesome. But he says, according to the power that worketh in you. According to the power, in relation to the power in you. What he's saying is, I'm able, but there is a part of that verse that says, I'm able to do it, but the second half of that verse is saying, but it hinges on what you're allowing the power of God to do through you. What are you willing to let God do through you? 
We say, oh, we, we're, we're a spirit-filled church. We want the Spirit of God to work in us and through us. And there's nothing wrong with that statement. That, that's how we want it to be. We want God to minister to us so we can minister to others. We freely receive. We freely give. But what God is saying in, in, in this portion of Scripture, He's saying, I am able, I am wanting, I, I, I'm wanting to just blow your mind, if you will. But there is a portion that hinges on us. He said, I'll work according to what the power that works in you will allow me to do. And we talk and we've, we've heard this, if you've been raised in church, about taking the limits off. Not limiting what God can do, but how often, even myself, have I limited and put God in a box? You know, this is impossible. You know, I believe God can move, but in my heart, I'm, I'm already preparing like God isn't going to move. In my life, I'm already preparing like He's not going to come. So what I have is I have spoken faith, but little action to back up my faith. You see, faith activates the Spirit of God. Faith is, 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 is something that allows, it opens the door and allows the Spirit of God to come in and begin to work and to begin to move and to begin to do great and marvelous things to, to be able to do the exceedingly abundantly. Faith opens that door. And God desperately wants to move. He desperately wants to be the God of more than enough. He desperately wants and He longs to be the God of exceedingly abundantly. Above all. I mean, second to none, above all we could ever ask or think. But there's a part that hinges on us and it hinges on our faith. The pastor preached on crazy faith and we're going to go right along with him. I want to preach to you tonight, I'm crazy enough. Some of you are looking at me like I am crazy enough. You better believe I'm crazy enough. I want God to make me crazy enough, if you will. Crazy in the world's standards. But the Bible tells us, as, as Paul would write on in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 6, as he goes into the armor of God, what we would know as the armor of God, he says this, Above all, in verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Above all, taking up the shield of faith. Pastor's got a shield. He's let me use it tonight. Gave me a sword too. That's dangerous. But he said, above all. Taking up the shield of faith. You see, the shield is something that we would consider defensive. And he even says it's to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And Paul would, would be very familiar with these articles that he was going to be describing in this portion of Scripture because he lived in a Roman-occupied world. And, and, and it, was, it was really iconic back then on a Roman battlefield. You wouldn't see a shield like this, shaped like this, but you would see an iconic shield. It was a long shield. It was a tall shield that would guard the length of, of a Roman soldier. It would protect him. As you see here, it was tall. It was, it was almost four foot tall. But they made it out of all, all these innovations, allowed it to be quite light and and they would stand in battle and, and the enemy would fire darts at them and arrows at them and, and it wouldn't penetrate the shield. It would protect them. But the shield was just as much offensive as defensive. And I know I'm not preaching anything new here tonight, but the shield was used not only to protect, but the shield was used to push back the enemy, allow him to be off balance, so the sword could have its way. Say, Pastor, what, what, does that, what does that mean? That means that the shield makes way 
for the sower. Faith makes way for the sower. Verse 17. Verse 17 reads like this. It says, And take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians 6, 17. Verse 16 says, Above all, take up. Above all, take up the shield of faith. See, it's saying, first of all, take up the shield of faith. You see, because faith, it goes on to say, faith, take up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation, pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's exactly how a Christian life begins. Through faith, we're saved. Through faith, by grace, we are saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe, there's faith, in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be, be saved. But faith also allows the Spirit of God to begin to move and to work. It tells the Spirit of God, you can have your way. You can do what you've come to do. You see, the shield pushes back against the enemy, so the sword has an easy path. To destroy the enemy. Not just destroy the enemy, but to destroy the plans of the enemy. If you're talking spiritually, to foil what the enemy has in place for your life. I know it's scary right now. I'm hollering and I seem mad and I'm waving around a sword and it's all kinds of crazy. But listen, I'm telling you, I'm crazy enough to believe that faith can activate the door for the Spirit of God to come and to heal and to deliver and to set free. I still believe that. I still believe that tonight. So faith opens the door for the Spirit of God to move. Mark 5 and 34. Jesus has been touched. The hem of his garment has been touched by the woman with issue of blood. and He turns to her and he says, what? In verse 34 he says, Woman, thy faith hath made thee whole. In other words, what he was saying, your faith has enabled and opened up the door for my spirit to come in and to heal your body. She made up in her mind before she ever started crawling that Jesus was the only answer. Jesus was the only physician that could take care of her needs. She tried everything else. She believed that she was going to be healed before the garment was ever touched. That's why she pressed. That's why she put through. The, there was a great general in the 13th century by the name of Sun Tzu that lived in China. He wrote a book called The Art of War. And he says, listen, a good soldier wins the battle, then goes out and fights it. What does that mean? A soldier has already won the battle in their mind before the battle has ever been fought. And church of the living God, can I speak to you tonight and say if you want to see the miraculous power of God on display, you have to come into the house of God. You've got to go to work. You've got to go to school with a made up mind to say, listen, miracles are already on the way. It's already happened. Jesus has already spilled his blood. He's already paid the price. Healing is accessible. Freedom is accessible. Salvation is accessible. I have faith and it has made way for the Spirit of God to be on display. Take up the shield. Take up the shield. Put on the helmet of salvation. Grab the sword of the Spirit. TJ, I'm going to need you to help me tonight. Come up here. You see... God wants His Spirit to be set free in the houses of God, houses of worship. God is, is, I believe, so grieved that we restrict Him. I just need you to hold this. You're my armor bearer, literally, tonight.
the spirit has so long been constricted because faith and has, has, has been absent from the church. And you may say, Pastor, listen, I've heard this my whole life. But do we really believe this? We've heard faith taught so many different ways, but do we really believe that God can do what He says He can do? Do we really have faith? Do we really have the faith? Are we really crazy enough to believe that you can say unto a mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into a sea, and it'll be done? So many wants to relate that to, 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 to different things and situations in your life. And, and granted, I believe wholeheartedly something that's in our lives, but I believe God could pick up a literal mountain and say, be thou moved and be thou cast in the sea and it'll be done. Because that word there in the Greek mountain, what does it mean? It means mountain. I believe God can do anything. I believe that. I, I want to believe that. I, I believe that the church of God needs to come to a place where it says, listen, God, you said it. I believe it. I'm stepping in it. I'm stepping out in faith. And listen, if I look crazy, so be it. So often we question, God, what if I pray and they're not healed? Well, what if you pray? What if you don't pray and they're not? God, what if I, what if I, 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 I step out in boldness? And share my faith with my coworker or my classmate. They're going to think I'm crazy. But what if you don't? What if they reject me? But what if they don't? Listen, we have to get rid of God, what if? We've got to get rid of that statement. We have to say, God, I'm okay with it. We have to go in, day in and day out of our daily, in our daily lives with a made up mind to say, God, what your word has said has been planted on the tables and the tablets of my heart and I believe it and I'm going to walk in it and God, you're available. I want your spirit to be available. I want my faith, the faith in my life to be an open door for your spirit to work through. Going back to what Sun Tzu said, he said, listen, a good soldier wins the battle then he fights. You see, Jesus, the battle was won in Gethsemane when he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. The battle was won in that moment. But the battle was fought on Calvary. It was won in Gethsemane, but it was fought on Calvary. It was fought in, 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 down in, in hell, in the pits of hell. It was, it was fought when he took the, the keys from death, hell, and the grave. He took them from Satan himself. It was fought. But when that stone opened, what that, mean is, what that means is he won the battle in Gethsemane. He fought it at Calvary. But now we have victory for an eternity. We have to walk in that church. We have to win the battle in prayer and, and supplication and reading God's word, God's word every morning. Every day of our lives. So the Spirit can work freely through our lives. Ephesians 6 and 17 says, Take up the sword of the, and the sword of the Spirit, that latter half of that verse, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What did John say in John 1 1? He says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the Word made flesh. And Jesus told his disciples in John 14, he says, Listen, what I do, you will do greater. So when sickness comes, when the enemy comes, when all these things come into our lives, all these obstacles and all these situations, raise up the shield, press back against the enemy, and allow the, the sword of the Spirit and, and the Holy Ghost to move on your behalf. Let the Word of God begin to go to work. Begin to quote the Word of God over your life. Listen, because what this Word says I am, that's who I am. And what that Word says that I can do, I can do. What that Word says is truth and it is final. No questions asked. No questions asked. Jesus was the Word made flesh. So what I say to you, when those situations come, what does the Word say? 
And I'm going to get to this. There's, there's more to this. But what does the word say? I know you're getting tired, TJ. It's okay. Hang in there. Be a good soldier. I'll tell you like Paul told Timothy. Fight the good fight. Be a good soldier. Endure hardness. I know it's hard. But what does the word say when those situations come? Uh, and granted, I know all this is cliche, but do, do we really have it in, in the depths of our heart? Do we really believe it on the innermost parts of us? Do, do we really have faith that, that God's word is true? Sickness comes. Well, what does the word say? By my stripes. By his stripes. Isaiah 53 says, by his stripes we are healed. What does the word say? When depression comes, anxiety comes, it says, listen, I've given you peace that surpasses all understanding. I've given you joy unspeakable. Your faith should open up the door for the word of God to come in. Say, listen, I know what the enemy has said, but it doesn't matter what the enemy says. It matters what God has already said. On your behalf. The, listen, church, the battle has been won. You've heard me say from this platform many times. B.H. Clendenin made a statement. He says, Listen, we don't have to fight for the victory. The victory's been won. Our job is to enforce the victory that Jesus won on Calvary. Church, the battle's been won before we ever fight it. I lost someone I love. I lost someone I care about. He says, listen, what does the word say? He says, I will turn your mourning into dancing. I will turn your ashes into beauty. He says, listen, I'm working all things for the good of them that love me. I'm called according to my purpose. What does the word say? Jesus in the wilderness, what did he hang on to? Word. Church, the Word of God is the Spirit of God moving. It's living. It's breathing. And I'm crazy enough to believe it. Moses is about to go and face the superpower of the world. Just him and God. And he says, listen, who do you want me to say sent me? And Jesus, or God says, listen, say I am. It doesn't matter what situation you're in God says listen I am you say I feel bound he says I am your freedom I'm depressed he says I am your joy I'm hopeless he says I, I'm your hope you're lost he says listen I'm your guide it doesn't matter what is going on, what situation in our lives. Listen, we need to have faith in the Word of God and we need to allow the Spirit of God to minister to us and, and through us and say, listen, God is the I Am. He says, I am the Wonderful. I am the Counselor. I am the Mighty God. I am the Everlasting Father. I am the Prince of Peace. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the Beginning and the End. Listen, it's not I was. It's not I used to be. It's not I might be today. It's not I'm tired today. I can't move on your behalf. He's saying, listen, it's already done. Whatever you need, I am. If your faith will open up the door, He said, I am. Are we crazy enough to believe that? Are we crazy enough to believe that today? I'm crazy enough to believe in Him. I, God, give us the faith. Give us crazy faith. God, give us boldness. Give us crazy boldness. Give us courage. Give us the ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And when we, we've done all to stand, let us continue to stand in Your Word. Are we crazy enough to believe what this word says? Do we have the faith? Do we have that crazy faith? You see, God says, listen, with man, Jesus said, with man it's impossible, but with God, all things. Not some things, not many things, but all things are possible. All 
things are possible. God, give us crazy faith. Faith that says, listen, uh, faith that says, listen, I'll make room for the exceedingly abundantly. Faith that says, listen, I'll let the Spirit of God work on the inside of me. Whatever He calls me to do, I will do it. Faith that gets rid of fear. Because perfect love that you receive through faith in Christ, perfect love casteth out all fear. Not some, but all fear. Church, we need crazy faith. Paul says, listen, take up the shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith. Stick around, I'm going to need you. He said, take up the shield of faith. Many scholars would agree that he was talking about that Roman shield. He was describing things he would see on a Roman soldier at that time. TJ, I need you to come down here. Keaton, I'm going to need your help tonight. Brother Jason, I'm going to need your help tonight. Brother Michael, I need your help tonight. Pastor, I need your help tonight. And, and, and if God would have given me this message sooner, you all would have had shields. It would have been plywood, but they would have been shields. I need you to come over here, Pastor. I'm sorry. If they'll come to the music tonight. I'm going to close with this. You see, faith is an amazing weapon by itself, right? Sword is an amazing weapon by itself. They're all gifts that God has given us. Given us the Bible says we're all given a measure of faith. But listen, He's given us a measure of faith, but we serve a measureless God. So faith has room to grow. You see, and the Romans took this shield, Jason, and they said, listen, it's got room for so much more potential. We're going to do some crazy things that no one else wanted to do with these shields. We're going we're to do something that people have never done before. You see, because in battle, and I want you to think of this spiritually tonight, in battle, I'm not fighting alone. Faith by itself is awesome. Having faith and, and your own faith and being solid in your faith is important. But listen, the Bible says, and Paul would say, listen, the body's made up of many different gifts, many different talents, many different people, many different creeds and colors, but we're still one body. And the Romans knew in order to, 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 to put down the number of casualties that they would have to teach their men to fight together. As one unit, as one body. And they said, listen, we're going to introduce this new tactic with our shields. And the Latin word for it is testudo, which means turtle. Sounds profound, right? I know I just... Blew your mind. Turtle. And he said, listen, what we'll do is we'll set the men in ranks, straight lines. TJ, I need you to stand here. I know I'm wielding a sword and it's really scary. Michael, I need you to stand here. Stand right here. Jason, I need you to stand behind Michael. Take a step to the left, Michael. Two steps. There you go. Stand behind Michael still. Keaton, I need you to stand behind TJ. Pastor, I need you to stand behind me. They would get into ranks, into lines. And see, what would happen is being on the front lines is a little scary. But what would happen is they would say second rank. The second rank would tell the first rank, we got your back. Don't you worry. We're with you. And oftentimes the first rank would have a spear. But the second rank would have their swords drawn and ready. And when the enemy, at a far distance, at, at, they wouldn't do it at, at risk of their own soldiers, but before their soldiers would begin to charge, the enemy would oftentimes send arrows over. 
And what they would do is the first rank would squat underneath their shield. Squat with me, boys. And the second rank would throw their shields on top of the heads of the first rank. And what they would do is they would create a shell. You can stand up. They would create a shell. That's why they called it the turtle. Where the, the fiery darts of the enemy not only wouldn't harm the first rank, but they wouldn't harm the second rank or the third rank. And everyone in the line was taken care of. See, listen, my faith is not only for myself, my faith is not only for the outside world, but my faith is for my brother and my sister. My faith is, is, is not only, listen, sometimes on the front line it gets hard up here. But my, my faith, it's not alone in the body of Christ because my brother behind me can put his hand on my shoulder and say, listen, I know faith, it's hard right now. I know your faith is bruised and battered, but I have enough faith to take care of you. I have enough faith to allow the, the Spirit of God to move on your behalf. Powerful. They would protect each other. But also, what this shield, this faith would do, if you guys would just get one straight line, line up with these gentlemen here, just right, right here, line up with me, line up with me, line up with me, sorry, sorry. This was all the first rank. They would take these shields and they would bind them together. When the enemy would come, what they formed was a wall of shields. And their commanding officer would begin to yell, push! In the midst of the battle, in the midst of the chaos, their commanding officer would say, push, take a step with me. Push! Push! You guys can step back. Say, push, push. And the faith, their faith was pushing back against the enemy, was taking territory. Their faith, even though it was hard and it was in the middle of chaos, their faith would begin to conquer the fear. Their faith would begin to conquer the anxiety. Their faith would begin to see the miraculous. Their faith would turn the odds around into their faith, into their favor. Faith would begin to say what the prophet said to his servant. God, open up his eyes so he can see what I see. Faith would begin to open up their eyes that they could say, listen, we're going to win this thing. We're going to get out of this thing. We're in the trench is right now but victory has already been won we just got to push we got to push and they would push in that first rank would push the enemy back and they would break off and the second rank would come with the sword until victory was won but see here's the thing the victory's already been won for us. But we still have to push. We still have to band together. We still have to pray. We still have to fast. We still have to seek His face. Why? Because... What will happen in those situations and those hard times when you push and you push and you push, eventually there will come a point where they would push all together and they would step out of the way. And the sword would follow. So take up your shield of faith. Put on your helmet of salvation. Take up the sword of the Spirit. You want the Spirit of God to move? Put your faith to work. Press back against the enemy. Fight when you feel like you can't fight. 
What this world needs, what this world is longing for is the Spirit of God to come in and to give them victory, to give them freedom, to give them peace, to give them joy, to give them hope. But it all hinges on my faith. So if you'll stand across this house tonight, and thank you gentlemen, you can be seated. This is what we need, church. I'm crazy enough to believe, sister, that God can do what He said He could do. I'm crazy enough to believe, I'm crazy enough to push with my faith tonight that God's going to touch Brother Randy where he's at right now. Is that crazy enough? That God will touch his back, that God will touch his lungs, that God will touch his stomach. I serve a God that calls those things which are not as though they were. He said, Abraham, you don't see anything right now, but I see a nation in you. And you may look at yourself and I see nothing, God, I see nothing. But he says, no, I see faith. I see strength. I see hope. I'm crazy enough. By the time you you walked next door this morning, I was praying this morning next door. But he didn't, he didn't see it with his physical eyes, but I had my shield out. Someone in my family's hurting right now in their body. Someone I love dearly, been a mentor to me, being afflicted in his body. This morning I was, I was supposed to be Finishing up some things for Sunday school. But I just felt the urge to just pray. I began to pray for my grandfather. He's had a terrible week. Man of faith, strong man. Seems so weak to me. In body this week. Pastor, I had no idea. But began to say, God, I'm crazy enough. This is where this message came from. I said, God, I'm crazy enough to believe my grandfather, who's been crippled for over 25 years. I'm crazy enough to believe that you can heal him. God, I'm crazy enough to believe that you can touch his mind right now. God, I'm crazy enough to believe that you can give my grandmother strength. I called my grandmother after church. I said, Mamma, how's Pap? She said, I, he's having a great day. said he's, he's in his right mind. He's rested. And I didn't know it at that time. But I was willing to say, God, I'll push. It seems impossible. I've seen him that way my whole life. But God, I believe it's possible. And you can't tell me otherwise. But this faith, as little as it may be smaller, way smaller than this shield, as little as my faith can be, there's so much more. But as little as my faith was, it may not open a door. Even if it opened a window, it was enough for God's Spirit 
to move. So my grandfather could have a great... And church, that's what I want. I want people to come into this house with all their mess, all their problems. Give us the drug addicts, give us the alcoholics, give, give, give us all the hurting and broken. All the hurting and broken came to David and God said, Listen, they came to you this way, but he turned them into mighty men and women of God. He turned them into mighty men of valor. God will take all the broke, busted, and disgusted. But God, let them leave. With us pushing, on, pushing in faith, let them leave and say, It's been a great day. Why has it been a great day? I found Jesus today. Or Jesus found me today. I received healing today. I received peace today. Why has it been a great day? Because I found freedom today. I found strength today. Why was it a great day? Because I found that God took my situation and He did exceedingly. Abundantly, above all, I ask or thank Him. He, God just took it. And He wasn't just enough, He was more than enough. Why was it a great day? Because I found out I'm an overcomer today. I'm a conqueror today. I'm a child of the King. I found that out today. That's what I want them to say. But church, we can leave here. And say, why was it a great day? Why did we see all that happen? Why was it a great day? Because we were crazy enough to believe that Jesus is still who He says He is. That He's not the I was. That He still is the I am. Who believes that with me today? Who wants faith in this house? Who wants to see Brother Randy healed? Crazy faith. Says gold and silver have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. Take thy bed. Walk. I want it to be a great day. Every day. Not just in the church house, but in my house. At the schoolhouse, at the workhouse. I want it to be a great day. If you grab the hand of the person next to you.